Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting during to episode 4 of Drop uh, uh, Dropout Idol Fruit Tart. So let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. <sighs> this has been a day from hell, and it's only beginning. So hopefully my day gets better. Because I feel like it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Poor babies. That is literally, yeah, that is the literal definition of expectation and reality in a nutshell. You gotta feel bad for them. I mean, they tried. <laughs> we well, you know what's her face. She's coming later on in this episode, so maybe about like the 15, 12 to 15 minute mark. You still look her. You just can't believe that's her. <laughs> Poor Roko. <laughs> Roko's just like, shit. <laughs> oh, God. Poor baby. Because look how short she is. <laughs> oh, God. No, but I mean, I know, yeah, yeah. But were there even any news people at the concert? I mean, yeah, there were important people, but I, I don't think... <laughs> yeah, that too. Just gotta be positive. Like, do they know anything about the live? <laughs> well, maybe. Well, I'm, yeah, yeah, you're not like a big flirt, but you are a flirt. <laughs> oh, poor baby. Oh, a love letter, though, from your number one fan. I bet you it's that girl with the brown hair. A no, no, fan. Love and fan are two different types of letters. I, 
it, if it is somebody from your class, I honestly really wouldn't be surprised. You just take it like it is. <laughs> I. <laughs> I mean, she just opened it now, like, Jesus. We not gonna talk about the fact that that thing just said I love you and I love you nothing else, but, um, that seems a little more, um, crazy ask or is that just me cause like woo, woo, Jesus no cause girl <laughs> you're gonna be me did I just change the color cause mm mm that could not be me. Well, yeah, it, it has to be. I mean, there are some guys with cute handwriting. Yeah. They <laughs> even put time kitty kitty in it. That's so cute. That one little Easter egg. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Maybe, but I I don't know. I don't really think she would be that type to put nothing, but I love... Huh? No, that's, uh, what's her face? Uh, yeah, I mean, but, like, the signature, the little thing on it, it seems like, um, homo? Hoe? I, I, it's something with an H. What does it say? <laughs> oh, you gotta love Nina so much. She's so fucking precious. <laughs>
Yeah, hammo. Because she's officially joining the group. <laughs> oh my god! Because she brought home a girl? Or because the girl was sleeping in her bed. Y'all don't even know! <laughs> oh, babe. A little bit of yes and a little bit of no. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you got like, ah, oh, you went to the wrong room. Hemo is joining the group. It was two hours late to the day, like, uh, even though. <laughs> so you basically legitimately got her drunk so she could say that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, and it seems like she'll be really fun and useful to the group. <laughs> yeah, she a kiwi. Trying to hold a laugh, and that's me sometimes.
Oh God. I mean, the the Yuri is strong. <laughs> I mean, at least it's not like um the one Yuri that like I watched as a reaction and everybody loved it, but then like towards the end, I like towards the beginning I liked it, but then towards the end, thinking about it overall, I was like, yeah, this show was eh, and so yeah, that that Yuri show was like kind of my least favorite and. The one that I was supposed to do reaction on and bloom into you are like my top two base shows for like what a Yuri relationship should look like instead of just like sexualizing it so much. I mean, cause yes, I, I get it. Sex sells, but damn, that was like a little too much for me. Baby, yeah, yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah, accept that reality. It's okay, don't make Hemo feel less confident about her size because she. Oh my god. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, they are handmade. I mean, but the girls could have gone to the store and bought their own. That too, besides the school swimsuit. What about you two? Okay, let's see it. Damn it. <laughs> What's up, Rocco? Yeah, but they're for her size. Yeah, yeah. Like, me and her were the exact same, like, size, and it wouldn't be for you. <laughs> oh, God. cute it's super small <laughs> it still looks good on y'all it's cute cause besides there are some guys who do like flat chested girls I I've never met them though <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> The kitty pile. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Hemo is just simple. Like, let me just stand here and not pose. Oh my god. 
Hemo is gay for Eno and Eno is gay for Rogo the Love Triangle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's hilarious. They look so cute. This was an adorable episode. I'm glad Hemo is officially now a part of the group because we now have five girls instead of four. Even though I love the four, but five is better, I'm just saying. Even though I like me some even number numbers instead of them odd numbers, I'm just saying. Because, you know, girl who was born on the 18th, that's an even mother effing number. But Hemo is cute. I loved her ever since last week when she first made her appearance. Um, I hope she does well. She's going to try her damn hardest and bestest no matter what. But yeah, that letter was from her. Both of them letter. That first I love you versus everything else all was from her. Because once I saw that little signature and I was like, it, it's not the girl with the brown hair anymore. I was like, it's got to be what's her face whose name I couldn't remember. And it was from Hemo. But <laughs> does Eno know that? <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't think Eno knows, but. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eno, when she find out that it was her, she probably gonna be like, oh, that makes sense. I mean, I don't want to say Hemo is a stalker, but. It, it looked like it. It hella looks like that. I mean, oh, this poor girl. I mean, she she is, like, over here, like, lusting over her. And it's, it's cute, but then there, I feel like there's going to be points where that ish might be hella creepy. Uh, you want, mm-hmm. Oh, sad day. <laughs> Because that's the first thing they thought of. Aww. That's so cute. She's so fucking adorable. Roko. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, of course, because since you are idols, you need to work on your autographs. I mean, oh, God, can we talk about, like, autograph episodes for idols? I think those are probably, like, my, not my top favorite, but probably my second favorite for, um, episodes for it. Because especially, like, I feel like Aikatsu, season one of Aikatsu did the best episode for autographs. And then I think later on when, um... When it was Akati Chan's turn, that was like the second best episode for her because she was so like season one of Akatsu was Ichigo trying to find herself as an idol, and because of the fact is when she was trying, she was so focused on making her signature and not um, trying to have a conversation with her fans and also multitasking with making her um, signature at the same time because hers is so big and grand and gorgeous and pretty as hell. Um, you could see why her best friend Aoi was like, you need to not also make time for you to talk to your fans and have a little conversation communication with them, but also to have the time to go ahead and multitask. And then it was kind of the same thing with Akari-chan because Akari-chan was such a big ass fan of Ichigo and so obsessed that she had her hair like her and everything. So for maybe like the first half of season two of Aikatsu when she finally came in as a character no matter what it was about okay what would Ichigo do and then finally when we got to the point where Ichigo and friends were eventually going to go into like the high school proportion of the idol academy um that they went to for Starlight Academy um and we were focusing on Akari-chan and her journey and when she finally was like I need to stop being like Ichigo and be my own person and be my own star because this is my journey. 
eight because it was like Ichigo just passing the torch down to her especially if you've seen the Aikatsu movie and so she was able to figure out her signature and everything do everything that she had to do but yeah I think signature episodes are really like probably the best episodes for idols because that is when they can put their um not almost like their whole entire being into a signature but it's just it, when you see a signature, you immediately know who that is. Their association. Yes, that's how some people make like little like copyrights of like mm, of writing for handwriting and figure out how. Oh, this is your handwriting. Let me copy it and let me sell some stuff. But I, I don't condone that. Please don't do that. But uh, yeah, I think it's really good, and I honestly cannot wait until next week. But yeah, Hemo is adorable. We love her. I'm so glad that she's finally here with the rest of the girls her introduction into this episode even though it's her second officially it's still good i i think there's just gonna be a lot of love triangle moments between hemo eno and roko because them three <laughs> that is that is something over there because like i said hemo is in love with eno and Eno is in love with Roko, and Roko is just like, you know what, like, you know, get the fuck off off me, like, I don't want to deal with this, it's too early in the morning, but Hemo is just that type of girl where she don't care, she's just like, alright, we're just gonna lay and we're gonna cuddle, and it went like that day up and what? <laughs> but yeah, she's so fucking cute, love her, you gotta love her, she's just too freaking adorable, but other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode four of Drop Out Idol Fruit Tart. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like, it really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel, I make videos every single day, join the Master Squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially next Monday for episode five. Bye, guys!